Hello everyone, welcome to Project Veritas headquarters in the infamous wall of shame where journalist reputations go to die, where journalists have to print retractions and corrections and articles questioning our journalism ethics. Today's retracto is number 361 and it goes to women's health. Headline, who are Joe Biden's children? What to know about Hunter, Ashley, Bo, and Naomi Biden? The byline goes to Emily Schieffer and Jennifer Mead. There they are on Twitter. They reported that members of Project Veritas attempted to use pages from Ashley Biden's desire to extort in an interview with Joe Biden, according to the reporters of the Daily Mail. But that was just an allegation by Ashley Biden's lawyers who had to correct or update the article, according to Biden's lawyers, as reported by the Daily Mail. Project Veritas denied the claim. There is a difference between an allegation and a fact. Cue the Retracto theme song. Retracto. So in this Women's Health magazine, I'm going to read you the before. Recently, Ashley's diary has become the center of a case surrounding Project Veritas, a nonprofit organization that investigates politicians. During Joe Biden's presidential campaign in 2020, members of Project Veritas attempted to use pages from Ashley's diary to extort an interview with Joe Biden, according to the newspaper, The Daily Mail. The Department of Justice and FBI are looking into the claims that a woman stole Ashley's diary while she was staying in a rental home in Florida and sold it to Project Veritas where its pages were published online. After they wrote, during Joe Biden's presidential campaign in 2020, members of Project Veritas attempted to use pages from Ashley's diary to extort an interview with Joe, according to Biden's lawyers. As reported by the Daily Mail, Project Veritas denies the claim. Now here's the interesting thing. It isn't just us that denies this claim. It's actually the Department of Justice itself. All this goes back to a letter that Project Veritas sent the Joe Biden campaign on October 16th, 2020. The letter was a request for comment. That's what journalists do. But the New York Times chose to selectively edit the contents of that letter to make it appear more nefarious than it actually was. Let's go back to the New York Times article covering the letter. In the New York Times article, it says, quote, using the diary as leverage. So the New York Times reporter Mike Schmidt utilize this request for comment as leverage, writing, quote, but Project Veritas was still trying to use the diary as leverage. And then they quoted our attorney, Jared E. quote, should we not hear from you by Tuesday, October 20th, we will have no choice but to act unilaterally and reserve the right to disclose that you refused our offer to provide answers to the questions raised by your daughter, Project Veritas Chief Legal Officer Jared E. wrote. A very lawyerly way of saying, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and publish that you refuse to comment. <laughs> That's what they included, but what they excluded, they selectively edited out of the New York Times article, we make this offer in good faith with the hopes to allow you, Mr. Biden, to present your side of the story to the public. We hope you accept the offer and let the public know your side of the story. They did not respond. In fact, they appear to have referred the matter to the Southern District of New York. In other words, they referred our request to comment to federal authorities. They referred journalism to federal authorities. And again, we chose not to publish the contents of the diary. Now, where things get very interesting is that in the secret warrants that were unearthed after the gag was lifted against Microsoft Corporation, again, we use Microsoft Outlook for all of my emails, in that secret warrant dating back to November 30th, 2020, some five, six weeks after we sent the letter to the Biden campaign for comment, it does indeed list blackmail as one of the crimes on this secret warrant to testify and get evidence in regards to an alleged violation of United States Code 873, which is blackmail. They were sending this to Microsoft Corporation for our emails about evidence of blackmail. So somehow the Department of Justice and the FBI had a sworn affidavit attesting to the existence of blackmail. Hmm. I wonder who might have said that to them. We don't know. The Reporters Committee has requested the Department of Justice unearth the secret affidavit so that we can see what the sworn affidavit says about who claimed that we committed, quote, blackmail. But here's where things get even more interesting. When the feds came to my apartment and my colleague's apartment, guess what wasn't one of the crimes listed? 
on the warrant signed by the magistrate judge a year later. Blackmail. That means that whatever was sworn in an affidavit, apparently no evidence was unearthed. In all of the emails and all the data they had collected with the secret warrants against Microsoft and apparently other vendors now we're learning, nothing, no evidence was unearthed to support that claim, so the feds chose to drop it. And by the feds choosing to drop it, that means that it wasn't actually blackmail. It was a request for comment. And we called out Rachel Maddow about all of this when she insinuated, inferred with a question mark that maybe we had extorted the president by asking him for comment. I mean, extorting a public figure like that in that way has, has legal implications. It was called a request for comment. The New York Times even pointed out that the attorneys for Ashley Biden told our general counsel, quote, this is insane. We should send this to the Southern District of New York. And of course, it's utter dystopian insanity when the children of the president can refer journalists to law enforcement when they ask questions about their misplaced or abandoned diary. And the other thing the women's health got wrong is they claimed that we published the diary. We did not. They corrected it to say its pages were later published online by another organization per the New York Times. The case remains ongoing. So we encourage all of you to reach out to Emily Schiffer and Jennifer Need. The two of them will be getting alpacas. All this could have been avoided if you just stuck to the facts, if you focused on the rights of journalists, the First Amendment, instead of lying about us. And now your correction will hang on the wall of shame, the new and improved wall of shame, or it will live in infamy forever.